السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. To carry on with the general embryology lectures, I'm gonna cover in this presentation the events that take place at the fourth week of development, which is mainly folding. I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt. There is rapidly growing dorsal part of the embryo compared to its ventral part because of the development of the neural tube and the somites on each side of it. This is an electron microscopic picture so you can see the somites. These are blocks of tissues on each side of the neural tube. And because of uh, the fact that these two structures are rapidly growing, so the embryo is forced to bend ventrally in a craniocaudal direction. So as a result of folding, the flat trilaminar embryonic disc will change into a cylindrical embryo and the folding occurs in two directions, in a cephalocaudal direction and in a lateral direction. You can see a side view of uh, an embryo. Uh, these are the somites and this is the neural tube, this is the uh, brain. And this is the rest of the neural tube. And you can see that the embryo here bends in a craniocaudal uh, direction. So if we start first with the cephalocaudal folding and we start with the formation of the head fold. In this picture you can see uh, the neural tube. And because uh, this is the brain region so it expands. Cranial to it lies the buccopharyngeal membrane and cranial to it lies the developing heart and its pericardial cavity and cranial to it lies the piece of mesoderm we call it septum transversum this septum will later on give us part of the diaphragm so if we try to draw it in a simple way this is the neural tube this is the buccopharyngeal membrane the heart and septum transverse and remember that it is lined ventrally by the endoderm of the yolk sac so as a result of rapidly growing brain region or forebrain the embryo is forced to bend ventrally in this direction so the heart moves downward and also the septum uh, transversum and this is the lining uh, of the yolk sac or the endo with further growth of the forebrain, there is more ventral bending or ventral folding of the embryo in this direction. So again, the buccopharyngeal membrane, instead of being cranial, will become ventral. And also the heart will move uh, ventral to the neural tube and below the buccopharyngeal membrane. And so is the septum transverse. And this is the endodermal lining of the yolk sac and part of it will be trapped in this cephalic or head fold. So what are the results of formation of the head fold? Part of the yolk sac will be trapped inside the head fold forming the foregut. The forebrain will become the most cephalic part in the embryo. The buccopharyngeal membrane will become ventral and the cranial to the heart. The septum transversum or the developing diaphragm will move and become ventral and caudal to the heart. And this is the normal anatomic arrangement of the structures in the human being. During the third week of development, the gestational sac is formed of the following. We have the embryonic disc. We have two cavities, amniotic cavity and yolk sac cavity. Outside the embryo, we have the chorea, the extra embryonic mesoderm. Then a cavity appears in the extra embryonic uh, mesoderm, we call it the extra embryonic silom. This extra embryonic silom will split the extra embryonic mesoderm into two layers. The one that lines the chorion and covers the amnion, we call it the somatic layer or parietal layer and the one that uh, covers the yolk sac from outside we call it the splank layer. Still the embryo is connected by a piece of mesoderm called the connecting stalk 
through its caudal end to the cornea. A small diverticulum or a small extension comes out of the caudal end of the yolk sac and extends into the connecting stalk. We call it the allantois. Cranial to the allantois lies another membrane that is called the cloacal membrane. So, what happens during the formation of the tail fold? Due to bending of the embryo in the ventral direction because of the growth of the neural tube and the somites, you can see that the allantois and the connecting stalk moves ventrally and part of the endoderm will be trapped into this tail fold like this and also when the allantois moves ventrally it drags part of the endoderm with it and forms a sac behind it called the cloaca with further growth the allantois and the connecting stalk moves more and more into the ventral side of the embryo and the endoderm or part of the yolk sac would be trapped inside the embryo so what are the results of formation of the tail fold first part of the yolk sac will be trapped inside the tail fold and form the hind gut the allantois will bend ventrally and drag a sac behind it, we call it the cloaca. The cloacal membrane, the allantois and uh, the connecting stalk will move ventrally towards the ventral aspect of the embryo. The allantois and the connecting stalk will later on form the umbilical cord. Remember that I said the embryo falls into two directions, in a cephalocaudal direction and in lateral direction. So how the lateral falls uh, occur? Again, this is the um, embryonic disc. This is the amnion, yolk sac, the connecting stalk, the allantois, and this is the heart forming region. If we take a section in it, like this, we can see the amnion, the yolk sac. In between them lies the trilaminar germ layer. In the middle, we have the notochord. On each side, we have the intraembryonic mesoderm. Above it lies the um, ectoderm that will differentiate into a neural tube. And below it lies the endoderm. And remember that the intraembryonic mesoderm. Uh, will differentiate into three regions paraaxial mesoderm, intermediate mesoderm, and lateral plate mesoderm. And because of the formation of the neural tube and the somites, the embryo will be forced to bend in lateral direction as well. With further growth, the lateral plate mesoderm will split by the appearance of a cavity inside it called the intraembryonic coelom at this point it is continuous with the extraembryonic coelom and split the lateral plate mesoderm into two layers somatopleuric layer and splanchnopleuric layers due to lateral folding the amnion or amniotic cavity expands and its sides try to approximate and read each other with further growth, part of the yolk sac will be trapped inside the embryo. So, you can see that the two uh, 
edges of the amniotic cavity approximate to each other and try to fuse and part of the yolk sac is already trapped inside the embryo and part of it is still outside the embryo. Now the embryo lies within the amniotic cavity. So what are the results of formation of the lateral fold? The flat embryo is cylindrical in shape now and part of the yolk sac will be trapped inside the body of the embryo and form the midgut. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like and share.